Good day fish tankers. As I've said in the previous video, I, I turned 50 recently. I can't believe I'm that old. Can't believe I'm a half a century old. And I'm st uh, for this video, I still got this cool t-shirt given to me by Sean and Angelique. And Whitemans, don't you worry. We'll go and we'll get that new braai and we'll get braaiing pretty soon. But that's a side back to fish. Now, I, if I remember correctly, started keeping fish when I was somewhere between 8 and 10 years old. And I'm 15 now, so that's 40 years of fish keeping. So hopefully, I have learned one or two things about this wonderful hobby. And I thought I'll just talk about three things, three sort of broad principles that I've learned in my 40 years of fish keeping. If you're interested in that, stick around. There's an expression is in this life, if you fail to plan, then you plan to fail. Now, that's the first thing. Always plan ahead. Have you ever had cleaning day and you take out a dirty filter canister and you walk of it to the kitchen to wash it out under the sink and boom, there's dishes in the sink because you didn't plan ahead. You've got to make sure all your houses are together with all the attachments. And then you need your buckets of your cleaning equipment your algae scrapers, all of it together and not forget about your towel which you need to plan ahead. Don't fall in a kid in a candy store trap. Plan what fish you are going to get. Don't just walk into the store and oh I want to get some angels and I'm going to chuck in some green neons because they definitely won't eat them and some of these would also be nice. And then why not throw in some cardinals as well and then you turn around in the store and you see these big chonker goldfish, even though they're cold water fish, let's chuck them with a tropical fish. And then what about a flower one as a specimen fish that will lead to disaster? Now you can start with a tank, a tank that you can afford with your budget, and you can go in a tank size and then you can work it backwards from the kind of fish that can go in that sort of aquarium size once you've decided what you want to do, if it's going to be aquascaping or more fish orientated or you can start with a fish for instance if you do want to keep these goldfish 80 liters for the first one and then 40 liters for each additional one so you need a large tank and you need big filters with ways of dispersing the flow because they're messy but they don't want very fast water flow and they're cold water fish so you're basically probably just going to have a variety of these guys or a small group so we don't have a lot of cold water fish in South Africa or if you want the flower horn, you're only going to have that single wet pet. I know Charles has got some or a flower horn that goes with other fish, but that's a very rare exception. Usually you're just going to have this one fish and you're going to have a single flower horn. And they'll need warm water as opposed to the goldfish. And they also need a big tank with big filters because big fish are messy. Guys, please share the content among your fishy groups. We'll greatly appreciate that. Or if you want some nano fish, smaller fish like these sparkling garamis, then you don't need that big a tank and that filter like that sponge filter you see there will suffice. As will if you keep these black focata rainbow fish. That will also do in just one of your normal size smaller tanks. The planning is not only about the fish you're going to keep and whether you have the right tank size to, for them or they are compatible, or you'll be able to provide the right care. It goes beyond that. Plan where you're going to put the tank, for instance. Is it in an area where you will see it regular, regularly? Or is it in an area that's too busy, it might even spook the fish, you need to strike the sweet spot? And is it accessible for maintenance? Sometimes you need to be able to get a little bit behind the tank. Sometimes you need to be able to get houses there and reach for electrics can't be too far from water or electricity plug. So plan things ahead and then you will plan to succeed. The second thing is, is something that's lacking today and that's why I think it's such a good hobby for especially for the youngsters and that is have patience. Rome was not built in a day. We live in an instant world. If you try to do fish keeping in an instant way, especially if you're a beginner, you can run into problems. Take your time to run in the aquarium. Stock very, very slowly. Uh, use lots of plants if it's going to be a planted aquarium. Then feed your fish healthy food and be patient and watch them grow. Give them the space to grow 
and see how a tiny little fish become a magnificent spe specimen, that is extremely uh, rewarding. Planted tanks require patience. It takes a bit of time to, uh, to develop into something really spectacular, especially if it's low tank, low tech tanks. If you are very impatient, then the high tech way is maybe for you that CO2 will make everything go quite a bit quicker uh, uh, like that. But patience is a requirement. Stick with it if you have a disease. Sometimes it takes a bit of time to cure. It isn't always instant. And patience always is rewarded in this hobby. So patience is a very big thing. The third thing that I would say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, like the Americans say. Especially when you're new, you think you always have to do something. Once the tank is run in, the filters are mature, leave it, give the plants a space to grow, and don't always fiddle with things. The more you, you disturb the ecosystem there, ripping out all the plants, planting in new plants, because you know you want different plants, that gets to planting as well, you disrupt that ecosystem, you disrupt the biological things in the tank. If you constantly redecorate, you stress out the fish, you disrupt things. So think and plan and have patience, but don't constantly change. If you're constantly changing, you know, if you're aquascaping and going from competition to competition, that's a different thing, but the fish is not the main focus and ecosystem is not the main focus. The aesthetic, the artistic creativity is, that's a different kind of thing. But you know, when I started, I have a filter, everything's working, and I think this filter is better. Change the box filter for a sponge filter. This filter is better, undergravel filter. This is working well, but I could be better. Let's rip this one out and put this new power filter in. And with all those changes, you disrupt your biological system. Let the tank settle and don't fiddle. If you have to have your hands constantly wet, then stick them in the sink and wash some dishes. But just sit back, enjoy the fish, observe, and don't fiddle with the aquarium all the time. You know, you don't have to wash that filter every week if you need to, then it means the filter is too small or doesn't have a capacity for your tank. You know, I don't, I don't clean my filters more than four, every four to six weeks. Maybe I'll take out a pre-filter or something, but don't fiddle with your biological system all the time. I don't, I rarely redo tanks and change substrate. It's only when I have to, and every now and then when I feel like a change, but don't fiddle with it all the time. You cause more trouble than what you solve. So those are the three things. Guys, if you've watched this far, please smash that like button. Tell me in the comment se section, how long have you kept fish? And uh, what are your takes from Bobby? What are the most important things that you have learned? And also remember to subscribe. And until we see each other again, take good care of those domestic denizens of the deep.